What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got some Baby Raccoon action for you guys to check out. Always like watching Baby Raccoons do their thing. A deck that actually has a good amount of offense, maybe not so much defense, because as far as I know, they don't really have like any powerful themed trap cards. Maybe Konami in the future, if they're giving Baby Raccoon some support, that would be kind of the direction that I lean towards. Because when you have Obedient School with a card that can summon three monsters from the deck, like chances are your offense is not going to be your problem. If it doesn't get Ash Blossom, you can obviously go for some strong plays they got rescue cat a while ago just another card that helps them get to where they want to go and then Ayers rock sunrise is not technically like a baby raccoon support card but it's a card that like super helps them what i'm saying is it wasn't made for like baby raccoons or anything like that so he opened up extremely good and his opponent ain't got that ash blossom which means he gets to go obedient schooled and rescue cats both of those would have been stopped by ash but look at the field he's able to make with naturia beast and the uh the ronin raccoon there I don't think he knows that Ronin Raccoon will not be destroyed if you control other beast monsters on the field. Naturia Beast got beast right in the name, bro. So that was actually a small misplay there to use Ghost Ogre here. Um, yeah, he should have just probably saved it. But he has a uh, 3200 attack token as well. Now, luckily, he's playing uh, Galaxy ABC, so he is able to make Cyber Dragon Infinity and suck up that copy of Nap Beast, thus he can activate his Union Hanger and maybe go for Borlo Dragon, or maybe not, maybe just attack with the monsters and, um, you know, try to do some work here. Maybe he could have tried to attack uh, the copy of the token first. Again, he tries to attack the Ronin Raccoon, but that doesn't work because Ronin Raccoon is it's basically the same as Draco Sack. You can't destroy it as long as you have a beast on the field, so that, that token obviously can counts nimble beaver is going to go down his extra monster zone is open too he let the nimble beaver go i probably would have negated it but it's whatever Ayers run AR, uh, AR sunrise it's going to activate it's going to summon that bambi bambi's going to get the uh, pet tiger and look at this look at the board this man has dude he has the he has three tokens on the field and they're all stronger than a cyber dragon infinity ain't that a bitch and you know they're obviously being powered up by the mrs radiant on top of that even though they got their stats from the cyber dragon infinity so this is unfortunate i mean you don't really expect to get completely molly whopped by baby raccoons let alone molly walked by a field of token baby raccoons but yeah sometimes that's uh sometimes that's life and sometimes you get otk'd by baby raccoons and that's exactly what's going to happen here he didn't even need to attack the cyber dragon infinity to uh, to basically close out the door next duel is against blue eyes and this time he's got Mistake. Mistake is probably the best floodgate for baby raccoons because they don't really do any searching. And when his opponent flips over that or activates the melody of the Awakening Dragon, boom, instantly shut it down. He draws into another one. This is where he got the name Brick Eyes from. He might try to go for White Spirit Dragon to pop the Mistake so he can use uh, his melody next turn. And sure enough, that's what he does. Now, he does have Gamma Soul on board, so you got to watch out, man. If he gets that Gamma Soul on the board, which he does, and he Regeki's uh, Gamma still has five tokens to work with, so he's a walking solemn now, but it doesn't even matter. He don't need the effect. He's going to go for the Ronin, and once again, got a 2,700 attack token that is uh, eating off the 2,200 attack from Gamma Seal, and then taking 500 from the Mrs. Radiant, and that is a, well, I totally, I, I didn't even realize that this is a two back-to-back -back OTKs for Baby Raccoons. <laughs> baby Raccoons, new meta 2018. This last one, it said hat in the duel, but it's, it's not hat. It's, it's basically... Um, uh, I would call it Star Seraph Artifacts or an artifact variant. This guy puts up a better fight, though. Do you see right there? He goes for the Pompanko. That's going to get eaten up by the Solemn Strike. And he doesn't really have any plays. He follows that up with a scapegoat, uh, scapegoat play. So now he's uh, getting a taste of his own medicine, I would say. Gets an Artifact Sanctum, which maybe I would probably say for Artifact Scythe, honestly. Just keeping your opponent out of the extra deck for a turn. Pretty good. He goes Ib and then Garrisu, which I'm not going to lie, wasn't a bad play. Because he did get a draw out of uh, Sovereignty. And then he gets a draw out of the uh, the Nengarisu. And he still gets a decent amount of battle damage. Maybe. He should have put this in a tap mode but i guess it's like whatever he sets everything or sets his spell and traps and then he goes for borlo dragon unfortunately do his i'm sorry his opponent just had way too much removal like borlo dragon was going to die one way or another he had interrupted slumber he hard drew a kaiju and he had regeki there was like zero chance that that damn borlo dragon was going to stay on the field so that was just unfortunate i think he got spooked in activating his artifact uh sanctum 
and he actually gets the worst result out of it as he's going to go Begal attack and he's going to pop two of his morale attacks, which generally this would be a great play. But uh, when your opponent has interrupted Slumber and Regeki, it's a terrible play because you kind of blow all your cards right here just to get all of them slumbered. And that's not good. He's just going to attack over his Gamma Seal. And I believe he's going to scoop once he sees his next draw. Yeah, it's the Artifact Scythe. Maybe he could have summoned Artifact Scythe instead of Begal attack, but then his uh, morale attacks would have been dead. And honestly, I don't think it would have mattered anyways because this guy had spear mode he had regeki he had wind up kitten which also can just like take care of a monster temporarily there was no way that he was going to like be able to establish a field because homeboy and the baby Ra raccoon deck just had too much removal so it was pretty much going to be a wrap so just some nice little baby raccoon duels for you guys to check out uh are people going to be interested yeah i guess i'll show the deck list Okay, I don't think that there's that much to explain here. Obviously, it was a pretty hefty uh, kaiju package. That is for when you happen to go second. You saw it put in a lot of work, plus it uh, enables you not only to run the kaiju waterfront, but interrupted slumber. I mean, being able to have, like, a gamma seal that is basically like not only a monster that can sit in defense mode with 3000 defense but then also is like a walking solid judgment it's pretty damn important and i think that it's uh definitely something that gives the deck a little more defensive prowess especially if you can somehow get i don't know nataria beast on the field as you saw him drop uh easily in the first door if you can drop nataria beast and then have like gamma as that walking solid judgment your opponent's going to be in a tight spot from what i've seen and i said this before the best floodgate for baby raccoons is mistake obviously there's so much searching in Yu-Gi-Oh with so many rotas and field spell rotas and then terraforming to get your field spell rotas etc etc baby raccoons don't really do any searching at all one ash blossom that's kind of weird maybe bump that up a couple of copies I do think eater of millions can be really good in a deck like this because eater of millions is I mean it's basically like remo removal for any big monster that is like difficult to get rid of maybe something like Borlo dragon and at the same time Eater of Millions uses, like, a bunch of cards in your extra deck that you might not use. Because, really, like, yeah, you see 15 cards in the extra, but, like, most of this is just scapegoat fodder. So, if you're not using scapegoat in any given duel, like, you're not going to use three copies of Ronin Raccoon, uh, Ronin, Ronin, Ronin Raccoon in a duel. You know what I mean? Like, you can just get rid of that. You're not going to really summon Ball Load all that much unless you resolve scapegoat or maybe, like, a Monster Reborn play or something like that. Your Mrs. Radiant probably going to not or not need three of those. So, there are cards that you can just give up for, you know, little bit of offense plus you're playing pot of desires anyways that's just an instant way to get a little more damage with your uh, eater of millions